part of understanding the nature and scope of the problem includes understanding what are the most common vulnerabilities attackers can exploit. The topics discussed in this video include unplanned information disclosure, predictable resource location, insufficient authorization, improper access controls, PHP misconfiguration, and mishandling file uploads. First of all, unplanned information disclosure. For the most part, this particular vulnerability arises from a misconfiguration of error reporting. If we have a look at the PHP INI settings which are involved, they include the error reporting setting itself, which oddly enough should be set as high as possible. The reason for this is that we want to log all possible errors, so this setting should be set to one or on. However, in a production website, we want to avoid the display of errors. Accordingly, the display errors setting should be set to zero or off. Referring once again to the White Hat Website Security Statistics Report, as you can see, information disclosure or information leakage forms the number one issue which was spotted on all websites surveyed. Information leakage weighs in at 55%. Another area to be aware of is referred to as the predictable resource location vulnerability. As you can see from the White Hat report, this comes in at 8% of the website surveyed. As an example, let's have a look at PHP MyAdmin. If we look at the suite's complete database and have a look at the members table, as you can see in this example, the names of the database columns follow predictable patterns. So, for example, the column which contains user credentials or passwords is simply called password. This represents a vulnerability which attackers can easily exploit. Another aspect of this particular vulnerability is the failure to change the defaults. PHP MyAdmin includes a folder called Setup. In Setup, you can run a setup configuration which allows you to reconfigure PHP MyAdmin itself. In this example, failing to change the defaults allows an attacker an additional attack vector. In this case, because setup was not removed, the attacker could theoretically gain access to PHP MyAdmin, which then might give them access to the database or the databases on this server themselves. Another vulnerability is insufficient authorization. This particular vulnerability involves allowing access to certain portions of the website without checking the appropriate credentials. Also involved in this vulnerability is setting of the file system rights, the rights of the PHP user, the rights of the user of the web server, and also the rights of the user of the database. If we have a look at the Apache configuration, for example, we look at the httpd.conf file. It's very important to know the user that the Apache web server is running as, as well as the group. In this example, it's a specific user on the server. In most cases where PHP is running as a module, it will be the same user as the web server user. Accordingly, you need to be very careful with assigning rights to the file system to this particular user. If PHP is running separately as what is known as a CGI binary, the PHP user will typically be the user that's authenticated on the server. Again, referring to the White Hat Security Survey, you'll notice that insufficient authorization falls at 11% of the website surveyed. Another critical vulnerability is improper access controls. This involves incorrect handling of passwords and incorrect storage of passwords. When handling passwords, it's important to have the users change the passwords on a relatively regular basis. In terms of storage, going back to PHP MyAdmin, you'll notice in the members database, the passwords are all stored as plain text. Normally, this would not be an issue because the database would be considered secure behind a firewall. However, if the attacker manages to successfully launch an SQL injection attack, the attacker may very well be able to discover the passwords. If they're in plain text, it's very easy then for the attacker to hijack user accounts. PHP misconfiguration is another very bad problem on many websites. PHP misconfiguration will fall into several different categories. In most cases, the configuration will occur within the PHP INI file. For example, you could configure the include path. This controls where PHP will look for files if not found.
open baster controls the root of where PHP is allowed to open files. Doc root establishes the document root for PHP itself, not the web server. And finally, user dir allows you to configure the name of the user directory from which PHP will be allowed to operate under certain circumstances. The allow URL include directive is extremely important in that it controls the ability of PHP to include files from remote servers. In most cases, you will find you do not need this capability. And by disabling this option, in other words, setting this option to false, it disallows the capability of attackers to include remote code on your website. You also have the capability of disabling specific functions and specific classes. This capability, however, in most cases is not needed unless you're in the situation where your users themselves are allowed to run PHP code. In this situation, you're able to disallow the use of specific functions or classes, which can limit the amount of damage you could potentially incur on your website. Another area of concern are the PHP INI settings concerned with file uploads. You can completely disable file uploads, for example, by setting this parameter to zero or off. You can control where the files are uploaded to by setting the upload temp dir directive. You can specify the input nesting level. You can also specify the number of input variables that are allowed within a form submission. Finally, you can dictate the upload maximum file size and the total number of file uploads that are permitted in one particular request cycle. One last consideration is when running PHP as a CGI binary. This would be the situation where you're running PHP in a web server environment where you either do not have the capability of running it as a module, in other words, the PHP module itself is not available for that environment, or through a customer policy or an internet service provider policy, you're not allowed to run PHP as a module. In this case, PHP is running as a separate binary, and a handoff occurs when a request is made. The handoff is made to the PHP binary, and the binary itself then activates the script. Problems that could arise, of course, would be accessing of system files or accessing documents on the server other than those intended to be run. There's a very good discussion on the PHP.NET website. If you look under Documentation and then Security, you will find installed as a CGI binary, including a discussion of the various types of attacks which are possible. A final security consideration is the mishandling of file uploads themselves. File upload information is found in a superglobal dollar underscore files. It's important to recognize that the name attribute is supplied by the user and is therefore suspect. It's also important to recognize that the type is associated with the MIME type of the file. However, this itself can also be forged. Once the file upload has taken place, it's important to move the file to a known valid area. And it's also important to check the error flag to make sure that the file upload occurred appropriately. Various techniques to address these vulnerabilities will be discussed in future videos. So in review, Unplanned information disclosure. The primary cause is improper error settings. It could also be the result of insufficient authorization. Predictable resource location. Examples of this vulnerability would include using obvious folder names such as administrator or obvious database column names such as password. It's also important to make sure that defaults are modified. Insufficient authorization includes aspects of the PHP user, file system rights, the web server user, the rights of the database user, too many rights, and also allowing access to secure data from an insecure page. Improper access controls involve improper password handling and improper password storage. Passwords should not be stored in plain text. PHP misconfiguration involves improper settings for paths and directories, remote code inclusion. You could disable certain classes or functions. Also involved is misconfiguring php.ini for file uploads. Another consideration is if you are running PHP as a CGI binary. Finally, mishandling file uploads, aside from the considerations already mentioned, would include a failure to treat suspect fields, such as name and type. Also, a failure to verify that the file uploaded correctly 
and that it was not moved to a secure location. This concludes our discussion of what are the most common vulnerabilities attackers can exploit.